welcome back. And um, our next guest is a gospel artist with a very lifting song. I know that yeah. uh, when it comes to gospel <laughs> music, Imano uh, uh, Babalola. Welcome to the show. Good to have Thank you, you. on the today. Thank you. It's good to be here. Okay. So that song is, what's the name of the song? Jackie Onoshi, Let oh. the Heavens Be Open. Okay. It's a wow. prayerful song. All right. That's um, like really nice. Yes. So, so, so what inspired that song? A lot of things inspired the song, even from me, my own um, experience at the, at the time when I was on a low time and on a down time and I was trusting God for quite a lot of things. Mm. And not even in my area of music, but you know, in other area, maybe where you work and some things like that. Okay. And you were actually believing God, even though I, already, I had like a project working on, but the song was not even part of the song. Okay. So, so one early in the morning I was walking and I was just praying and what kept coming to me was and that was when Redeem Church we were we have a program called Open Heaven and I was it was keep rugging to my heart as a come on walking on the street when you see people walking with rag, you see people maybe under Obalin Day, you see people sleeping under the mm. the, the bridge, the bridge yeah. and all that. And that keep ringing on my head that oh, I'm a son of, uh, who has everything, of son of God who created everything. Mm -hmm. How can I be walking with a rag? Okay. I want to eat and can eat, eating bone, not eating flesh, not eating meat. So that is not my God. Father, please, let heaven mm -hmm. be open. Let me to enjoy these riches. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that was what inspired the okay. song. I know that when it comes to gospel music, it's you watch, you've been in different aspects, songwriter, worship leader, yeah. minister, and um, your course, everything has spanned years and years. Now, when it comes to gospel music yeah. in Nigeria, or your worship ministry, yeah. which obviously has been years, do you think it has that impact that say, that's maybe a bit off point that a secular artist mm. has. Mm. Do you think it rates equally, even though the message is different? Mm. I can say before it wasn't, but now we're getting there. Now is more or less that people are accepting the gospel artists before you, you are only in the four corners of the church. Yes. Anything outside the church, you are nowhere to be found. In fact, you cannot even introduce yourself as a gospel artist mm. because people see them as. Can I use the word of papa, somebody suffering, maybe <laughs> drop out of no. school and all that? In fact, in choir, they see all of, all of us in choir, maybe we don't have a vision. But now you see a parent that when you tell your parent that you want to sing and you're a gospel, oh, God bless you. And they pray for you, they support you. Now we see more support than before. Mm. You see gospel artists striving now, unlike before. It was before that you can say, gospel artists, you're on. But now, even most of the most of our gospel guys that went to secular, some of them some of them are coming back <laughs> wow. into the gospel because now it's thriving, especially when you listen to who called you into it. Mm. Because when God called you, He can never disappoint you. So that is what I keep telling the younger ones now that coming under me as a music director and all that. I said now gospel music is the ill thing. Is wow. it, okay, know. so what was your main vision going into gospel music? Well, were you trying to pass a message or yeah, yeah like what inspired. inspired you? Like what is the drive? Well, at first I love music. I actually started like somebody like, like wild music, like <laughs> like, <laughs> like <laughs> as wild <laughs> music, like like Kirk Franklin. In fact, I mentor when it started. I, st I started with that. In fact, that was what actually took me. I'm, I'm a church boy, but that was what really encouraged me to not join the choir. Mm. But I thought that was all. I started going to campuses, organizing concert, concerts, concerts like storming the house. And then I came, I come up with different concepts, wide concepts that attract the younger ones. Mm -hmm. So I don't do the norm. Okay. I try to do, create something that co yes. students will want to. At the end of the day, you will have captivated them capture them, and when you give altar call, they see the light in, oh, this is not the norm. Mm -hmm. So I can actually do this. So at that point, I created a dance group mm -hmm. where in, on campuses, we call it Latter House, where you have the opportunity to explore your talent. You can dance, you can still dance for God. Back then, I remember the OGG, original gospel gangsters, that once they have your concert, and after doing the concert, they made altar call, and you see people coming crying. 
but then you will have done a lot of assignment at home. You pray, you fast, because you are not just doing it just because you want to entertain. You need to talk to the God that can touch the heart of man. Yes. Yes. So in doing that, that was why I started. So I started as that. Before you know it, I that one Sunday I was leading worship and God told me this is what I want you to do. <sighs> you know, sometimes people believe that worship is boring. Hmm. <laughs> well, because of time, I want to okay. go to this. Okay. What are some challenges that gospel artists face? You said it's now, of course, financially rewarding. And, but what are some of the challenges that gospel artists still face in an industry that has secular artists? Well, it, it differs. Somebody, someone, it, an artist will tell you that he, uh, his own um, challenges is finance. Why some will tell you acceptance? Why some will tell you platform? You have some that has a very good content, good music, but they don't have the platform. Why you have some, they don't really have that content, but they have somebody pushing them. So that is why, so it differs. Everybody have different kind of challenges. That before, the challenges most gospel artists has money. was <laughs> money. Yes, finances. Finances. You have projects, you'll be going, writing letters, oh God, you'll be writing letters from one office to another. They'll tell you, sorry, we don't support gospel. Wow. We do secular. Mm -hmm. But now I think the narrative is changing. And another one is, now after you have raised money to, to do the project, to now get a marketer to help you market. Mm. Mm. Do you get marketer? Advertising. Because I know that. But now, you know, internet now make it easy. I was talking before. But now you can put your song, if it's very good, on every platform on the social media. Before you know it, people streaming and you're making your money. So that has minimized the mm. power the marketers has on us. Yes. Before, no marketer will call it. Once they hear, <laughs> as you're calling Jesus, right. you're calling God, and all that, they'll say, ah, this one will not sell. This one will not bring money for me. Mm. So we had that challenge before. No. But now, I think, I think it's subsiding, really. Mm. Mm, that's great. So how do you differentiate yourself? Because I'm not really big on religion, okay. but um, how do you make yourself different? Because there's a whole lot of singers, pastors, preachers, and yeah. they are, I don't want to say they're misdirecting people, but yeah. how do you differentiate yourself in this gospel ministry, ministry that you've chosen to yeah, go into? The message that God gave to you, and you stick to it, not but compromising is it not, anything. Do you not get... Um, how do I say it? Sidelined by worldly things. Let me put it that way. <laughs> worldly. A lot. But like I said, it has to do with focus. What is God telling you? When you have a relationship with God, there's a particular information. Like, like that Jackie Orange. Jackie Orange was not even part of the song I was planning to release as my producer. We had other projects that is even the least. But when God keeps telling me that song is what I want you to release, when you listen to God, is the huge thing for me. Mm. I listen more to God to mm. than mine. Okay. Mm. Okay. So I'm sure there are future projects coming out. Yeah. Songs that we yeah. can expect. Yeah. Concerts, we have songs. Tours. Yes. Okay. Mm. By God's so grace. on this note, what should be the role of the church in nation building? It's a critical period because we're trying to say we love the things that are happening in Nigeria. We have so many gospel singers. We have so much religion going on. Yes. I'm a Christian, but yeah. at the same time, it seems like things are not changing. We pray so much, but mm. nothing is happening. So mm. what should the role of the church be? in nation building at this time? Hmm. I, I would say the, the church, especially our leaders, should encourage the people to do what they have in mind to do. Some are not being encouraged. Some are not, um, because we only pray. Honestly. And no action. That's the only thing I have. So you have church. members that want to go into politics, hmm. and you can mentor them. You can support them with every necessary things they, they need as a church, that goes a long way. Oh, we are saying that we have a bad leader, we have bad leaders. The good one, are we pushing them up? Mm. What are we doing? In the church, what exactly are we doing? When you have a younger one that have vision, vibrant, and they keep coming to you, have, have written a lot of proposals, and anytime he brings a proposal, you dump the proposal. Mm. proposal. Mm. So I think church need to stand up to all the talent and the gifts that God has yeah. deposited in our people and support them. Mm. There's one letter I saw recently that the, uh, the didn't present you of God, I'm not supposed, they came up with a letter that if you want to go into politics, fill a form, write a letter and send it to a particular directory. Church needs to stand up. Mm. Mm. 
we need to stand on our ground. We need to leave the four wall of our churches, believing in God. We have this, yes, we have that. We need to put up and do something. As a show against the church. Yes. <laughs> but, it's not the conversation. but thank you so much. I mean, you didn't just come to talk about, oh, church, church, church. But you spoke about the practicality yeah. of how to um, leave church and actually make a difference in the yeah. four walls yeah. outside, outside of Nigeria. Of Nigeria. Yeah. And it's, I want to say this will wrap up the show. Our word of the day is, I have chosen to no longer be apologetic for my femaleness mm. and femininity. I want to be respected in all of my femaleness because I deserve to be. That's Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie on womanhood and what it means to be a female. So, I mean, this is where we wrap up the show. Thank you so much for coming Thank on you. the show. Thank you. Me and Thank Pete you. had a really great yeah. time. Yeah. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Really <laughs> I, have, Thank you. I have chosen to no longer be apologetic for my femaleness and my femininity. And I want to be respected in all of my femaleness because I deserve to be. And um, so all the women out there, we're still celebrating motherhood. And yeah, it's definitely a great month. Yeah, so we try to... It's actually been a really great month. And I'm just proud to be a woman. You mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. So this is where we wrap up the show. We'll see you tomorrow for another exciting show. Have a good day. Bye-bye.